ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांति संदेश वेलकम टू साई पर्स ऑफ विजडम भगवान से दैट नो वन कैन अंडरस्टैंड हिज लव हिज डिविनिटी ऑन द अदर हैंड वन शुड ट्राई टू एक्सपीरियंस हिम रादर देन एनालाइज हिम सो स्वामी डेप्थ ऑफ लव is immeasurable and beyond our comprehension swami not only loved everybody everybody loved him there is a song composed during his 60th birthday everybody loves sai sai loves everybody everybody loves sai sai loves everybody it happens it's our experience all teachers loved him like anything more than their own children there is one teacher by name mehboob khan who taught english and social science he was very popular among his students for his earnest and appealing teaching methods he was an old bachelor and treated such a with unique affection satya who danced they lovingly compelled by his teacher mehboob khan mehboob khan used to force swami to accept sweets and savouries that brought to the school he would say that his house was specially cleansed for the preparation of the dish because he knew that such a would not eat anything having the remotest contact with the non vegetarian dishes he would say that he himself had not taken food yet mehboob khan that he himself had not taken food yet for he wanted such a to partake of it first he would silently for long stroking such as here mehboob khan recognized quite early the great power that satya was his friends however treated him as not different from themselves and satya did not harp on any differences in fact he believed in sharing satya would bring groundnuts in his pencil box once in the sixth class when you are not in the classroom gazula krishnayya one of his schoolmates stole the groundnuts when satya returned he asked krishnayya why did you steal all of them you should have kept some for me just he passed a negative remark that's all another great feature that we find in swami is that he is a great composer he composed many songs and tuned them and made everybody sing along with him at kamalapuram a provision storekeeper named kotte subban wanted satya to write a jingle for the medicine he sold satya would one day speak of him in later years this what baba said kotte subban knew that i would compose poems and songs he would come to our school now and then and tell me such and such a medicine has come certain stock of medicines have arrived write some advertisements for them i used to write suitable jingles for them and then take the boys along with me around the town singing the jingles kutte subana had a small bamboo mat we would fix a stick to it and on the mat paste the written matter 
to be advertised. We went around the place singing in praise of products. Kutte Subarna would feel very happy to hear the jingles and he would give me the articles and books that I needed. At that time, a new medicine called Bala Bhaskara had come. He pressed me to write an entertainment for this medicine. I took up the work and wrote a poem as follows. I will give you the English translation to the original Telugu version composed by Baba himself. We have found Bala Bhaskara. Come, come, O oh boys. Illness of all sorts, pains and swollen hands, good for all troubles, diseases of worst types. Come, come, O oh boys. If you ask where to get it, everyone knows it. Look, look here at Kote Subarna's shop. Come, come. Oh boys, Pandit T. Gopalachari's precious tonic. Come, come, oh boys. When I mean, sang this jingle, Kote Subarna was thoroughly pleased. When the train boys began to sing in the bazaar, he distributed money to all of them. Other shopkeepers who heard the songs, written and sung in this manner, began to approach me. They began inviting me while I was in school or in the house to write singles for their product. If they supplied the subject matter, I willingly wrote for them the text for the advertisement. An excellent writer, his compositions are poetic and the language used is easily understood by everyone. Now, his divinity, declared much later, was indicated quite early. As I said last time, it was his grandfather who recognized his divinity. Later, another incident had happened. One noteworthy incident that took place at Kamalapuram involved a rocking chair. One day, while no one was around to object, young Sachinarayana sat in the chair, rocking himself back and forth. Quite unannounced, Shashamarazu's Bhargarila Subharazu entered the room. He was infuriated to see the boy enjoying the luxury of the rocking chair. He shouted at Satya, Are you a prince that you want a swinging chair? On hearing these remarks, Satya felt very hurt and immediately resolved it. You do not understand now who really I am. You shall see in time, whether I am a prince or something bigger than that. This Satya will take his seat on a chair, nay, on a throne, empaneled with silver. Subarazu protested, but as Sashamarazu had just entered the room, the situation was diffused. Little did Subarazu comprehend then that his annoyance at little Satya would later turn into tears of joy and repentance for not having comprehended his reality. Little did Subarazu know then that these would turn out to be prophetic words. That years later, when a new silver throne would be brought for Baba, he would not allow any devotee to uncover it for a long time. 
one day Subharazu would be ushered into Baba's presence and asked to uncover it. Subharazu was not actually at fault. Nobody was really at fault. In fact, they had the real privilege of being part of an exercise wherein the spirit of Satya was going through an intense struggle of molding and self-expression. Why did Satya go to the fair at all? Was it that he was left with no choice? Or was it that he did not want to disappoint his schoolmates? Was it worth it at all? At the cost of so much personal deprivation? He had the choice to take the new pair of clothes from his friend. He had the choice to receive almost thrice the amount for his unused books. But he did not exercise any of these choices. The events at Kamalapuram and Pushwagiri demonstrated how Satya actually lived in love. In the years to come, this love would blossom to fullness and mankind would understand why little Satya always went out of his way to make the concerns and problems of others his very own. What prophetic words they were. Really a wonderful thing. The spirit of tolerance in Bhagavan, right from his childhood, is amazing and unbelievable. Once at Kamalapuram and went on to further studies at the Samiti Elementary School in Bukkapatnam. Bukkapatnam was four kilometers away from Puttaparthi, across the Chitravati River. Satya would walk to the Bukkapatnam school, his hair well combed, wearing two dots, one of Vibhuti and another of Kumkum on his forehead. He was always clean and neatly dressed. Venkata Subaya was one of those boys who accompanied Satya to school and back. He and others would mischievously throw thorn balls at Satya's thick hair and Satya would run away to avoid them. The students at Bukhapat was rather trying on young Satya, hardly 14 years old. He had to finish preparing breakfast and lunch for himself and his grandfather at Puttaparthi in the early hours of the morning. He had to have his routine breakfast of a porridge-like mixture of the locally grown ragi and broken rice or cold rice and curds as an alternative. On the way to school, there were a few older boys also who were jealous of the new special student at the school. They would rag him. They would even manhandle him in the sands of every now and then and douse him with waters of Chitravati. Spoiling his clean clothes. He was never ruffled. He would tolerate the ragging in a sportive spirit and with a smile, bearing no ill will. In this brief talk, the spirit of thousands that Swami had, right from his childhood, and his prophetic words that the world will know and recognize his divinity. And his talents in composing songs and poems and his abundant love are highlighted so that we will also learn to some extent of these divine qualities. Saira.